I would like to follow up with what Stephen Few said, um, that we need to reduce the noise. And I think this is the first thing we need to do before we start uh, playing the music and telling the great stories with the music. And this is why I think we need some notation rules for e effective dashboard implementation. And this is why I would say CFOs don't like it colorful. And I want to show you what I mean with that. On the next slide, you see a sales dashboard. It's just a gray, black, and colorful dashboards about sales. I do not want to judge on that one. I just want to show you on the next slide another sales dashboard. And what I want to say is there have been two sales dashboards and they look completely different. Completely different. And this is the problem. If we ask Google, the result is on the next slide. Please show us some, some dashboards. What we get is a collection of completely different looking dashboards. Nothing in common. Not the least. They just look completely different. And this is actually the opposite of what we have in other disciplines. As Larissa mentioned, I'm a passionate musician. So on the next slide, you see what we get if we ask Google for sheet music. And you see, it's sheet music from different countries, from different centuries, but it looks somehow the same. And the reason why it looks the same is because there is something, something behind this, this uh, sheet music, and this is a notation. Now, if we move forward, we see that we have um, uh, this notation in two aspects. One aspect is the the labeling of we are of what we are looking at in music in sheet music it's always the same thing we have the title of what we are playing on the first page in the middle um, at the top we have the composer to the right we have an arranger underneath it we have the instrument here the piano on the left hand side and we have the speed in which we need to play above the first bar it's always the same in every single sheet of music. Now look at your reports and look at your dashboards where you have all the labeling. So why don't we, as on the next slide shown, have a standardized, a unified title for all pages, charts, and tables. In the first line, we name the, the reporting unit. In the second line, we talk about the measure and the measure unit. And in the third line, we mention the period and probably the scenario, whether we are looking forward, having some scenario planning, or whether we have um, just actual data. So this is rule number one, our notation rule number one. So on the next slide, you see that this Warsaw Concerto we have been looking at is also completely in black and white. This is what Stephen View meant when he wanted to reduce the noise. We, we just have reduced everything in music that is not necessary. And the same is on the next slide, which what we have in, 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 in electric engineering. Or on the next slide, if you look at architecture, if you just look at a construction plan, it's always the same. They absolutely reduce it to the minimum. The notation is the absolutely minimum that is necessary to get it across. This is uh, reducing the noise. And if they use color, as on the next slide in, in, in road signs, when they use color, then they use color for purpose, not for decoration, but for purpose. Here they use the red color as a warning color. So the stop sign is in red. This is the point where my, my colleague, uh, Professor Rolf Hichert, um, just came up with an idea. Why don't we do the same thing in business communication? Why don't we, we just uh, have a notation where things that mean the same consistently look the same? For instance, if we, if we set up a second rule, this is the next slide. If we set up a second rule, um, so um, the, 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 the next slide, please. Um, if we set up a second rule, and the second rule is about variances, when we talk about variances, 
then we make them red and green. I think that's a simple rule and probably you already do that. And the next rule on the next slide is that we then probably have a blue or an additional color for all height lighting, but we do it consistently. If we decide to do it blue, then it's always blue. The next uh, rule is about the different data types, data sets we have. We call them scenarios. You have actual data, you have planned data, you have forecasted data. So why don't we consistently show actual data with a solid field, whereas planned data, things that probably will happen in future, are just outlined. And if something is in between, if it's a forecast, we just paint it hatched. Why don't we do that? And with only those four rules, we will already get um, part of the way. Actually, as you see on the next slide, there are much more rules. If you are interested, just go to ibcs.com and uh, on ibcs.com slash standards, you will find those standards, you can register, you can discuss with the IBCS Association, which is just an open, it's like Wikipedia, you know it from Wikipedia. It's a creative common thing where the community of the, of the business analysts worldwide defines their own language. So visit us on ibcs.com and register. If we then apply those rules, uh, we just can scroll through some, some reports. So on the next slide, for instance, you see just a column chart. And on the next slide, you see a waterfall chart. And on the next slide, you see a table with an integrated waterfall, a vertical waterfall. And you see it's all looking pretty similar. So that finally, if we ask Google again, show us, show us some IBCS compliant reports, this is what we get. And you see, it's pretty close to where we wanted to go because on the next slide, we compare it again with sheet music. And you see, if we just apply those notation rules, we come pretty close to that idea. And the good thing is, if we apply that, then there has been a, a, a study from a Technical University Munich together with Blue Ford. And on the next slide, you see the result of, of this study they realized that people that are have been acquainted with this IBCS notation and use IBCS notation, they will make 61% less errors after reading the reports, and they are 46% faster in understanding that report. So this is really great news. So on the next slide, if you are interested in getting deeper into that, you probably are interested in the book, Solid Outline Attached, where we explain that. And I hope I could convince you that CFOs don't like it colorful, but they want it consistent.